My name is Ed Sahowski. I'm filling in for the mayor who is running a little late this evening. Uh, it's December 12, 2019. We have our meeting this evening with our high school representatives. We welcome them this evening. And at this time, I'll ask the clerk to call the roll. Ms. Rebecca Busanski. Here. Ms. Laura Fallon. Present. Mr. Lonnie Kaufman. Here. Mr. Downey Meyer. Mr. Howard Moore. Here. Ms. Susan Voss. Here. Mr. Edward Zahowski. Present. Mr. Vice Chair, you have the forum. Thank you very much. Okay. May I just make a quick disclaimer since we're on TV? If you see any odd behaviors, it's because we've had some parents requesting action shots of their students presenting, so. I'll be oh, taking yeah. a few photos. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. Um, <laughs> good to know. Thanks um, for clarifying what type of odd behavior. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I guess we'll just get right into it. This is uh, Izzy Donnelly. He's one of my fellow student union members, and he's been a huge help in this survey. Um, so thanks, Izzy, and thanks for being here. Um, so I think guess what we're going to present to you right now is um, the information that we've received from and, and the information that we've analyzed from this um, later start time survey um, that we've sent out to the entire school. Um, so yeah, um, <laughs> sorry. Uh, so I guess we'll just get right into it, right? Mm -hmm. um, so everybody, I guess, should have a sheet. Excuse the comment thing. Um, but so we're, we sent the survey out to the entire school um, and asked the via uh, Google Forms and we asked them to just answer some questions related to changing the start times. Um, 649 students um, responded, which is, what is that, is that 75.7% of the student body? So a, a good amount, we would say. Um, and so we first started off just looking at their grade and their race to, um, to about 75% of the students who responded were white and then you know you can see the rest is so majority white students were uh, answered. The grade um, it was about 30% of ninth grade students, 30% of 10th grade students and then about roughly 20 of 11 and 12th grade students. Um, and we think that's ma just like the difference in the grades that took the, the survey is mainly just because of the um, fact that we sent this out during first period and asked students to answer during first period and some 11th and 12th graders have a free first period because they're taking a Smith class or they have a capstone or, um, or what else, internship, yeah. stuff like that. Um, so that may skew the data a little bit. Um, moving on. So some of the, uh, so this is like the main chart that we have and uh, it turns out that 60% of students in our survey supported later start times whereas about 40% of people did not. And so the main reason for supporting was sleep. About 45% of all students cited that uh, for some reason having to do with that they needed more sleep or that they liked to sleep or something like that. And then the second most common reason that we're that we had was people were indifferent to it, so that either means that they didn't really care that much or they just didn't respond. And uh, people also wanted more time in the morning. Some people just said 7.30 was too early, and then there were some other reasons. And uh, one, the primary reason for not supporting it was that people like to get out early. And then the second most common reason was, again, just indifference. People did not care. People didn't think that it would help at all. And then some of the other reasons were people had jobs, people thought it would interfere with their schedules, there were other reasons, people were used to it, and one of them was people could not get, like had, had a conflict with rides to school. Mm -hmm. So the other thing we asked students is whether uh, they had any conflicts or concerns with changing the start time. Um, so this was, I think, answered by students who um, did not support the issue of of changing the start time. Um, so the main reason about 41% of students, um, the ma their main conflict or concern would be sports um, and just having to push sports back which could you know mean less time for other activities or you know playing in the dark or if they had to you know drive a long distance to get to this the, their sport meets it would just have 
you know, an impact on, on their life. Um, and then the, and then there was work was an issue, um, transportation, getting to and from school, um, having enough time for homework and meeting teachers after class. Um, they weren't, a, a lot of students seemed to be like just concerned about how long teachers would be able to stay after class if the time moved back, um, if they'd still be able to stay for an hour, an hour and a half, or if they'd have to stay for a shorter period of time. Um, a lot of people, you know, just had a bunch of different reasons, like they just had too many activities or they were really worried about, you know, both um, getting to and from school and the amount of time for homework. Um, and then the other category, kind of just a lot of different things uh, went into that, I think. There were a lot of, like, one-time answers and that's why it's a larger category. Um, uh, so. Yeah, but um, one thing that was surprising for us in this category was that I don't think anyone cited um, Smith classes being an issue, which we thought of as a union because uh, generally right now being able to take Smith classes as a junior and senior um, is something that we can do because their class periods often fall in our third and fourth period um, and that would change if the start time changed and so we thought that that may be another issue that students either weren't thinking about or maybe that's just the student union that's think that, that thinks that's an issue um, yeah and then uh, we also we also specified one of the conflicts as being uh, jobs and we had like a, a separate portion on that so in uh, for all of the students who took the survey about 30 percent of people had uh, jobs and then of that 30%, uh, most people would be able to keep their jobs, but there was 20% who would not be able to keep their job. And some people said they might be able to keep their job. And uh, that consists of 34 students total mm -hmm. that would not be able to keep their job. And uh, we also had another section about student sleep time. And uh, as you can see, there's a, uh, there's a graph for it. And we found that the average sleep time that students were getting was about was 7.4 hours of sleep and uh, so yeah. Mm -hmm. I think just to add to that part we asked that question just because that seems to be like a main concern is just students getting enough sleep um, and we wanted to see how like the current start time is affecting them. Um, so yeah we also looked at uh, specifically the correlation between different answers and um, the race of the students who were taking the survey. Um, so uh, we looked at the, um, yeah. Yeah, we, we looked at the uh, people's opinion on later start time based on race because we, uh, we, and I'm sure everyone else feels that a later start should, uh, should not like influence one race more than another. So uh, we found that there was about a 5% decrease in terms of uh, people who were white versus people of the global majority who, uh, in terms of supporting or not supporting later start times, and uh, people who prefer not to say it was about 50-50, but that is not a very strong, st strong, uh, strong statistic. So, so yeah. And um, also. Yeah, and then we also looked at the correlation between students' race and if they had a job and whether they were able to keep their job or not. So this graph on the fifth page shows um, uh, students' race broken into white people of the global majority and prefer not to say. Um, and so we tried to just, and then the section in blue is they're able to keep the job, red not able to keep the job and might be able to keep the job. Um, and so that's one of the other things that we looked at, just that correlation, because again, we don't want to, you know, that we don't want to have a greater impact on one race versus the other or others. Um, and then on the last page, we further broke down um, the, um, just to kind of, it, this is like the same, this, that last graph is the same information uh, displayed in the, the previous graph. However, it breaks down um, people of the global majority into specific races. Um, so we can have like a greater um, just idea of which exact races are being affected. Um, and it also looks at just like 
the proportion of students of each um, race who are affected in it. So that's pretty much all the information we have in this packet. Uh, yeah, another thing to say is that it might be worth uh, surveying parents or middle schoolers, because th this is just the high school opinion as of now, if we are to proceed with this. And uh, also, if there's any other additional information about the data that you want to know, just ask us, and we're happy to get that to you. Great, thank you very much. Superintendent? I'd like to just start with an appreciation for this data. I think you guys did an awesome job of it. Um, um, I'm going to be asked to summarize this later on in the regular <laughs> meeting. And so I just wanted to ask about one of your graphs um, because you entered the raw data. Looking at these um, red areas, mm -hmm. about how many students would lose their job if you were to start to understand the total number of students? In total numbers? Yeah. Um, let me figure. Oh, 34. So oh, in the uh, in, a different. In, the, in the graph under jobs, I think we we specify that about thirty four percent of or not mm -hmm. percent sorry thirty four students total would not be able to keep their jobs. So on the third page. The top of that one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, um, about a long time ago, about 10 years ago, uh, there was an ad hoc committee that looked at that, that question sort of from a different angle. Uh, I think when Steve Harrell went around and interviewed some of the biggest employers of high school students mm -hmm. and so some of the big grocery stores and the hospital and, you know, various, various folks who hire high school kids mm -hmm. and um, so he did it from the other direction right yeah and and the, the what he got was that most of those employers would be willing to shift their hours mm -hmm. for those workers that they were because those workers were not working like an eight-hour shift in other words they weren't opening and closing mm -hmm. the store right right and so if they came in 45 minutes later mm -hmm. they would still do the same work so, so it's possible, and I just don't know, you know, because I don't know right. what what all these people are, because this is from the other direction. Yeah. So I don't know what all these people's jobs are, but if they are in those jobs, they would look at it and say, I couldn't do that job, I'd lose it because my job starts at, you know, two thirty. Right. Okay? Right. But if in fact that that, that piece that it starts at two thirty could be changed by the employer, they might not, and I don't know how you can. I don't know how you can sort of find that out. Superintendent? If I could just respond to that, this data may show the exact same thing from the other side. That's what I meant. I mean, you know, maybe it's a quarter of the students who would really be stuck, but maybe three quarters wouldn't be if their own perception is correct. Yeah, right. We, we, and don't I don't know, know. If that, how that matches up with what Mr. Harrell found. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. We don't really know. You'd have to have each one check with their employer. <laughs> right, and so I think these are based on like students' assumptions or their their mm -hmm. you know or their job is currently configured. I mean, it could right be. exactly mm -hmm. how the and and they're not sure how that could be changed. Or it could also mean that they you know wouldn't be able to you know work enough hours or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Ms. Voss. Um, first of all, this is fantastic data, so thank, thank you. you. And the fact that 75% of the school responded is a really high response rate. So. Mm -hmm. I could imagine in a few years um, this could be repeated to see if the if thing if we make a change in total we might look at total hours of sleep in a few years and compare it and I think you've set the district up really well yeah. to do that so fantastic and then of course I can't help but ask a question <laughs> and make a comment what the comment is um, I really appreciate that you're concerned about the Smith classes. Mm -hmm. I think it's not going to be a problem for this reason, but I keep saying this because I want everybody to think about this as we move forward. We're going to have this X block scheduled into our day next year at the high school. It's a change. And if that's done with the lens of that some students might want to use that time to go take a class at Smith, 
and it's done in a thoughtful way that it seems to me that can kind of be a buffer for right. this problem and right. to, that could be done in a way to maximize. I mean, it's only one piece that goes in, of course, to what's best, but it should be on the table. So I'm hopeful that it won't be a problem. Yeah, I think that's yeah, yeah. what we are kind of thinking too. I think it's just not you know set in stone, or we at least we don't know when that'll be the X block will be yeah. done or how it'll happen. Yeah. So. And then my only other question, do you mind if I put no, I can page two is I'm I just want to make sure I understand this one plot. Um, that one, that one, yeah. So this has 200, this represents 200 students who said they had a conflict or a concern. Mm -hmm. Are they the ones in red on the one above it? Yes. Th and so in that one it said 1% had a concern about job, but down here, so it seems higher. Right, I think, and I think that was one of the, the interesting pieces of data for us too. Um, I'm not, Exactly sure where that part comes from. Do so you are you have saying that like fourteen percent of people reported work as a conflict or concern? Yeah, so that's 30. like twenty-eight. So like that, so would, if it's two hundred, that's right, like twenty-eight students here. Yeah, whereas I, up above, it seems like a much smaller number. Yeah. It's so I think what happens is that uh, some people who like have a job, if they can keep it, then it's not really a concern or a conflict for them. Okay. So they they're not going to report that as like a reason or or like or a conflict for that matter. So were these two separate questions? Yeah, they're oh, separate. Okay, questions. okay, that yeah. that solves it. Okay, okay, thanks. Mr. Oh, thank um, so I have a question and a request. So okay. again, I, I reiterate my, my colleagues. This is a very good survey. Great response. Great. Thank you for doing this. It's very helpful. So I'm um, surprised that um, in some of the research that we've discussed and you, you hear about changing start time has to do with family responsibilities, taking care of siblings, and if you will, after school. And I don't see that coming up, and I'm wondering, is I, that because students didn't respond? Am I missing it? Was it a choice that wasn't part of it? What, are you surprised? What, just help so me with that a little bit. There, there definitely were uh, like a couple of students who said that, but I don't think it was a big enough category for it to be like, mm -hmm. it, it, I think it was classified into other. Yeah, so there were, I think, so I was the one that was looking at the conflicts and concerns, and uh, yeah, I have the same response as that there were just very few students who listed that as um, an issue, and so we didn't put it into its own separate category. So this this was an open question. List your response. Yeah, it was an open question. We classified them. And then you and only a couple of students mentioned that. That's surprising to me. I guess mm -hmm. that's good. Yeah. If we're going to move in this direction, that would be one of the things I think we'd all be very sensitive to. Mm -hmm. um, not to say that two isn't too much, but I would really expect a lot more. So that's that's interesting. My second question is, because you have such high response rate, if you don't mind, I'm, I'm really interested if, in looking at some of these differences by grade level. Yeah, sure. So for example, I don't know if you did this already, but even the basic question of whether they support it or not, right. looks like that was your first question, mm -hmm. um, by grade level. Did you look at that yet? Oh, uh, we have not looked at that. We have not looked at by grade level, yeah. Right. Um, what do you, I'm just, what do you think you would say, differences? I think, I think there would, I think there would be differences well, do you think there'd be differences by grade level? I think, I think it would change slightly, but I'm not sure how much of that is because you know, like the students that are in higher grade levels, it doesn't really impact them. Like I'm a senior, so this wouldn't have an influence mm -hmm. on me, and so mm -hmm. they may not, you know, care as much. Right. Whereas you know, someone who's in ninth grade, okay. th yeah. they yeah. lived yeah. through it for three years. So. And yeah, we can only speculate, but I think that. Uh, yeah. One thing that could happen is that like some of the upper classmen are have like gotten used to the start time, so I would think that some of the lower classmen would prefer yeah. later start times. Mm -hmm. But, but it's, so it's, it's, it's my colleague's time. But thank you for that. And if you could, I was just curious what you thought. But um, if you can look into that a little bit yeah. more and let us know, I think that would be helpful. Yeah, definitely. Thank you, Mr. Mm -hmm. Brzezinski. Well, I just want to echo what everyone else said, and you just, it's what a great job you did on this survey, so thank you so much. And I appreciate you covering so many aspects, especially ha the questions about equity and really breaking that down and looking at the different groups is really helpful. I'm also, I'm also really struck by how few students talked about taking care of other younger sibling, or younger students. Right and about the concern, lack of concern about Smith classes. I think those have been two, uh, you know, ideas that have just been 
uh, we all, or I certainly have been operating under the assumption that it was a really big deal. And yeah. um, so that is really interesting. And I also think the I don't need to see grade level information, but um, I also kind of agree that maybe the upper grades might feel a little less strongly about it than the lower grades. But mostly I just, I don't have a question or anything, just thank you. Okay, thank you. Kudos, well done. Response. Just to add to these two comments, I wonder if you're not hearing about the issue of taking care of younger kids because what's been discussed this year is delaying all three schools. So yeah, right. um, mm -hmm. it's not really an issue True. if they understand yeah. what we're proposing because mm -hmm. the high school would still get out before the other schools. So did they understand that in your question? So I think I think it kind of d I'm I'm not sure that it was completely understood. We definitely got some responses saying that. Um, that they'd be concerned about transportation because if, if we moved the start time back 30 minutes, that would co like align with the middle school start time, and they were worried that parents wouldn't be able to get both students on time. Uh -huh. um, so I'm not sure how many people understood exactly the, the, the current plan, um, but it, I also, yeah, yeah. And if you want to, we can share with you the exact survey. Mm -hmm. That everyone took. Sounds good. Is that yeah? Sure. I'd like to see that. that okay, cool. Perfect. Yeah. Any other comments? <coughs> okay. Well, great. Hearing none. I want to thank you so much for being part of the meeting this evening and sharing this information. I look forward to hearing from you again in the new year. Yeah. And. Uh, continue the conversation around the late start, that's for sure. Yeah. We have a couple more minutes here before um, we have to start our regular meeting. Do, I was kind of curious if either one of you had thoughts on late start yourselves being high school students. If you, if you don't mind just speaking about it personally. No, not at all. I mean, I think personally, I think it would have, it would make a really big difference on, on students as well. I'm, I'm really supportive of changing at least the high school start time back 30 minutes. I think it would, yeah, I think sleep is really important. And I know personally it's, you know, as I've gotten older, it's been much harder for me to fall asleep at a younger, at a younger, uh, um, earlier time. And it's also like right now I have a f free first period. And so <laughs> I, I'm able to wake up at 8.15 every morning and it has made all the difference and I really can't imagine going back to next semester when I have a first period class. But um, it's, and I, yeah, I think, it'll, I think it'll have a really big impact if it's something that we'd end up doing. I've thought a lot about the issue and uh, I think there's good arguments on both sides, but uh, I haven't really come to a consensus per personally and uh, I also think that my role in this is just to be like, the person who delivers the data rather than the person who gives the opinion. So. <laughs> Great. Th thank you very much. Can't you say? We practiced that this morning. <laughs> uh, yeah. Great. Okay. Uh, hearing no other comments, um, a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, this meeting is now adjourned with our Student Advisory Council. Thank you very much.